What is the nature of this investment? Just the nature of this investment. Uh, ultimately, this is a, it's a, it's an investment into the cab industry, so the taxi industry. So there's uh, two things that are one thing that I really like about this investment. It's, uh, it's essentially funding SMEs or funding entrepreneurs. So it's your typical Uber model would be a situation, and we've seen this typically in the market where you have an investor who buys a vehicle from uh, and finances via the bank, and then he employs a driver. And typically, the drivers don't do that well because uh, because of the whole profit sharing situation that they've got with with the Uber investor. The initiative that we funded now is specifically for owner drivers. So you you cannot have a situation where an investor comes in and employs someone to to drive for him. And the reason we like that is it stimulates entrepreneurship and ultimately um, a vibrant SME market is, would lead to a vibrant uh, economy. So in a nutshell, Zebra is a subsidiary of SA Taxi and they provide funding specifically for Uber or for Zebra cabs. Why did you go with SA Taxi? Well, SA Taxi is an interesting one. I mean, we've been dealing with SA Taxi for well in excess of 10 years. We're very, very comfortable with management. Um, we know the guys quite well. They're uh, quite a conservative bunch. Um, and then I must also add, we've we've seen various uh, other players in the market approach approach future growth for funding for for, for similar similar initiatives. The reason we went with SEC Taxi specifically is they've really got that uh, infrastructure backbone in place. I mean, what SA Taxi can offer the the the, the entrepreneur ultimately is uh, a fully integrated solution. So what I mean by that is uh, from the sale of the vehicle to maintenance of the vehicle to providing uh, clients for this for these entrepreneurs um, to funding the vehicle. So it's a, it's a totally integrated package that they offer relative to other players in the market who just do financing, for instance. And if I can just draw a parallel, David, uh, with, with the banks, for instance, the banks would finance the Uber driver, but just provide the financing and off the Uber driver goes and they don't uh, really interact with that, with that entrepreneur again. In terms of SA Taxi, there's a whole lot of value-added services, uh, some of which I've just mentioned now. But others would be, for instance, they would provide uh, driver teaching uh, facilities, um, helping the drivers manage their cash flow, for instance, um, helping them with uh, client uh, client interaction techniques, um, all of these which lead to the driver being more successful ultimately. What is the relationship between SA Taxi and Zebra Cabs? I believe SA Taxi acquired Zebra Cabs. Yes, so it's actually uh, acquired Zebra Cabs uh, in around 20, 2015, um, and Zebra Cabs now form part of the SA Taxi Group, um, so it's part of the part of the group. Is the the funding from Future Growth Asset Management then going towards Zebra Cabs and their owner driver scheme? Yes, it's going to Zebra Cabs, but ultimately this this forms part of the SA, SA Taxi Group. The funding that we provided is into a specific SPV, uh, special purpose vehicle. The taxi industry is quite a volatile industry, sometimes unregulated, it gets a bit of a bad name. Why are you confident that that is an industry where you feel your money is safe? Yeah, look, the taxi industry is an interesting one. But I mean, uh, SA Taxi as a, as a, as a group, they're actually, they're actually one, of the, one of the guys in the industry that's bettering the industry. So there's a lot of things that they do in the markets, uh, such as, for instance, uh, I mentioned the driver development. Uh, in some some cases, they do advanced driving classes. They've got very good relationships with the regulators, the, reg um, uh, the regulators both on a national and on a provincial level. So, I mean, if you're going to fund into the taxi industries, uh, industry, this is definitely the guys you want to want to finance. I mean, they're the guys trying to, to improve the industry. It's important for you, though, to have complete confidence in SA Taxi you obviously have this long-standing relationship. You view SA Taxi as something of a pioneer of innovation in the taxi industry, don't you? Yeah, so definitely, I mean, uh, in terms of pioneering the industry, just the way they manage their book, why we're comfortable with them is the initiative that we're funding now is very, very similar to what the, the taxi industry looked like 10 years ago um, when we started funding SA Taxi. So, I mean, if I can just draw the parallel with the minibus taxi industry, there you've got a very fragmented market. So there's not big players in the market. There's a lot of uh, independent guys uh, going around. And at the time when we started funding SA Taxi, the fleet was very old. Uh, the, it's the general taxi fleet within South Africa. So that presented an opportunity for us, for us to fund them and for them to recapitalize the market. So we're seeing a similar trend in the, in the metered, caps, uh, metered taxi industry. Uh, we've got a situation where there's, about, there's close to 20,000 meter cabs in the industry. But access to finance has been a problem for these guys um, that play in the market. 
Um, and in addition to that, um, the fleet is also quite aged. And I mean, the older your vehicle is, the, the, the less productive you are as an entrepreneur. So it's, it's important for these guys to continually upgrade their, their vehicles. And then lies the, there lies the opportunity for SA Taxi. You've mentioned what it is about the Uber model that you don't like, where you see the advantage for investment with SA Taxi. Uber, though, has completely disrupted the taxi industry and has shown incredible growth. Do you think there is still a demand for metered taxis? It seems that that possibly is something that is being phased out as people prefer to go the Uber route in terms of booking a taxi, paying for a taxi. Look, the Uber, maybe I should bring the point in as well. If a taxi or zebra is not a direct competitor to Uber, uh, the uh, SA Taxi is in effect a non-bank financial institution, uh, so they provide financing for people going into the market. So essentially what they could do is they could fund an entire fleet of Uber cabs, for instance, and that uh, would still stack up in terms of their business model because they provide financing for vehicles, essentially. Um, and then the second point is uh, there is definitely a need for, for cabs. I mean, uh, the point that I've made earlier is that there's close to 20,000, it's around 17,000 um, cabs going in the industry at the moment and of that a very small portion uh, close to 20 percent or 15 to 20 percent is actually uber uber drivers so there's a very very big independent cab driver um, community out there um, and that is a big opportunity for SA taxi because they ultimately want to recapitalize those vehicles and get newer vehicles on the market and get these guys hopefully onto their platform which would make a taxi uh, more profitable ultimately. Will they be getting their drivers into a system similar to Uber's where an app dictates the way taxis are booked, an app dictates the way a taxi is paid for? No, I think that's one of the benefits of Zebra Cabs as well. I mean, they've, they've got this app, the app's up and running, it's, it's been going for, for a few months already. But in addition to um, the app, there's multiple hailing methods or multiple methods in which clients can actually book a ride on a Zebra Cab for instance, uh, you can you can road ale. You can stand along the side of the curb and just call a cab. Um, just put out your hand, call a cab. You could call their call center, as an example. You can use their website. And then they've also got relationships with corporates, um, whereby they uh, enter into contracts with corporates, and the corporates use them to transfer uh, staff, essentially. So there's multiple methods in which you can book via the Zebra, Zebra Cab platform, which is a benefit to, to the drivers, ultimately, because you don't just want to be reliant on an app. In what other way is SA Taxi different from Uber? Right, so the, the SA Taxi one, or the Zebra the zebra initiative, is different in another way in, in terms of the, the payment method. So currently Uber, you can pay with credit card, and in some instances, cash as well. Um, zebra allows for cash, they allow for credit card, they allow for e-wallets, so there's, there's numerous payment methods as well. You, you're not relying solely on the app to, to, to make your payment. So they've actually entered into an arrangement with one of the banks, and they'll have uh, point-of-sale uh, devices in the vehicle. So you can actually you can actually pay with your actual credit card or cash or e-wallet, which just makes the rider experience uh, a, a little bit better in terms of payment. SA Taxi also mentions the way in which it can differentiate itself from Uber, and one of the things is that they are partnering with corporates in Joburg to meet mm. their transport needs. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, look, so, so that would be a large corporate that, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically getting a corporate on their book. So if a taxi would form the relationship with a corporate, if the corporate wants to make a booking to transfer staff from one point to another, they would contact Zebra, and Zebra would then route that request through to the cab drivers, the underlying cab drivers. So essentially, if a taxi, they're leveraging their, uh, their standing in the market the source business for the underlying cab drivers. And, and obviously un the underlying cab driver benefits from that. So he, he's, gonna, he's, getting, uh, he's getting miles on the clock or clients in his car, um, and it comes from a source, uh, it's a taxi, ultimately. Perception is a big issue as well, and we've seen so many taxis on the roads in South Africa that are in a terrible state of repair. Mm. You've mentioned that SA Taxi has upgraded the fleets uh, and that the research shows the average age of a metered taxi fleet is five years. Are you satisfied then that SA Taxi continually looks at the, the fleet and looks at the equipment and the comfort of the cars that are being made available? Yeah, definitely. We're very comfortable with that, uh, David. 
Um, what ACPSA actually actually does is uh, drivers drivers that are on the zebra platform specifically, and you are 100% right when you say perception is a is a big thing in this industry. Also, and just to draw a parallel with the with the minibus taxi industry again, with a minibus you can have a couple of dents in the minibus and people will still ride. With a cab, if you pull up with a a lot of dents in your in your cab, you're not likely to get uh, you're not likely to get a client as easily. So what Zebra Cabs does is uh, twice a month these guys actually need to report to SA Taxi Head Office and they'll do an inspection on that vehicle uh, just to see that everything is still, still up to scratch and that the standards are maintained because ultimately they want to put a name out there, they want to put a brand out there um, and seeing that the car is in perfectly good condition is one of the ways that they can actually boost their brand relative to competitors. I believe this initial funding then is earmarked for expansion over a two-year period. Give me a little bit more information on that. Yeah, so how it works is um, the initiative is running in Joburg at the moment. Um, ultimately, the ultimately the objective would be to, to move into other other cities as well, Cape Town and Durban probably being the next ones. Uh, but for ESA Taxi, it's about getting that, getting that uh, presence in one city, just being known in one city before they branch out. So the, the, the process here is essentially this funding would be used to get the Joburg, uh, Joburg section up and running and then expand from there. Obviously future growth gets involved for financial considerations. Gershwin, to what extent are you motivated by the developmental focus here, looking at development and empowerment in South Africa of, of South Africans? Yeah, David, that's a very big consideration for us. So. At the moment, Future Growth has about uh, 170 billion rands of assets under management, and a very big portion of that is specifically um, driven towards development finance initiatives. So we've got a fund that uh, deals specifically with these things. Uh, it's called the Infrastructure and Development Bond Fund, and that's one of the largest uh, funds of its kind in South Africa. So it's a very big focus for us. And then the SME angle was a very big driving factor for us uh, entering into this investment as well. So one of the big focuses for Future Growth is to, to, to invest into projects where there's a positive social spin-off. And this definitely ticks the box in that regard.